Welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're heading to the savannas of Africa for a battle of wits as we take on the strategy game, Bakari. Bakari was released by Finnish company Tactic in 2002 and actually won Family Game of the Year that year at the Cannes International Games Festival. Bakari is an abstract strategy game for two to four players aged seven and up and is going to take you roughly half an hour to play. Now the name Bakari is a little bit of a mystery to me, I'm not entirely sure where it's come from, though there is a place called Bakari in the Cameroon in Africa, of course this has got an African theme to it, and in Swahili Bakari, the name, means promising or hopeful, but that's as much as I've been able to find out about it. Now obviously this has got an African theme to it, it is an abstract strategy game but it's got some nice kind of skinning put to it so that it's got this really tribal theme to it. Now Tactic actually re-released this game in 2016 calling it Totem with a completely new theme on it which is more of the Native American culture. In Bakari, you're going to play against your opponents trying to move from one side of the board to the other and off of it, but you're going to be stopped by these animal symbols which are on the board and that's going to play a big part in the tactics of this game. You can see on the box art here, it's mainly a big photograph of the game pieces, but it's got this nice kind of jungle theme to it and it's actually got this nice Jumanji look to it. The wooden Jumanji board game box from the movie is actually echoed here in the box art layout on the front you can see these carved wooden panel lines here with the triangles and these circles with the different animals in them is very reminiscent of the movie box. On the back of the box you can see a much clearer picture of the game board setup and this is a European release so you can see multiple languages of what this game is basically about. Bakari seems pretty proud of its winning game design but is it really that good? Does it deserve to have won Family Game of the Year? Well, let's take a closer look and find out. There are 19 playing pieces in the game and although set out like this, it looks like I'm missing a couple of them. This is quite deliberate. There are six orange playing pieces, six red pieces, four green pieces and three white pieces. And this is a cost cutting move on the part of the game's producers. If you're playing a two player game, you're only gonna need the orange and the red pieces. If you're playing a three player game, you're gonna use orange, red and green. And if you're playing a four player game, you're gonna use the orange, the red, the green and the white. It just means that if you're a particular fan of the colors green or white, you can't use them in only a two player game. Now the pieces themselves are really rather nice. You can see here that they are this kind of African tribal mask or totem. They seem to be based on the West African Central Ivory Coast masks, uh, possibly of the Baule people who use a kind of Senufu style which combines human and animal features into a single design. And it's pretty nice. It's nice and chunky. You can see it's hollow in the bottom here. It's good quality plastic. And I really like that it's got this kind of wood grain effect on it. So these are pretty cool. There are four very large, thick, good quality cards that are pretty much like drinks coasters. And these feature an orange antelope, a green lizard, a pink flamingo, and a blue rhinoceros. There's a thick piece of card with some arrows marked on it to let you know which direction you're supposed to be going in. The board itself is made from that same nice thick quality cardboard which is quarter folded so that it opens up into a nice big square. You can see that this features all of the animals, those four animals which can be seen on the cards and these are laid out in a 12 by 12 square. The different animals are set out on here in a completely random pattern and the nice thing about this board is that you can actually put it any way round. So it doesn't matter what way round you put it, you can use it any way. So it does mean that you've got some versatility with this game and you can play a different kind of game each time by using one of the four different sides. 
sides. Because the board doesn't have a set way around that it goes, that's why we have the arrow piece so that you can decide which side that you're going to start from and then the arrow piece will go on that side pointing the direction that you're going to be traveling. So in this case, we're gonna start with the pieces lined up on this side and they're going to try and move across the board that way. When you're initially setting up the game and placing your playing pieces onto this back starting line here, you can put them in any order or sequence that you like. Players take it in turn playing one piece onto a square at a time and you can put it anywhere. You don't have to have them in any kind of pattern, it doesn't have to be symmetrical or anything or repeating. You can just put them anywhere as long as you're taking it in turns to place your pieces. Two player setup will have six of each colour on the board. A three player game will have four of each colour set up on the board. And a four player game will have three of each colour set up on the board. The object of the game then is to be the first player to manoeuvre all of your colour of playing pieces from one side of the board to the other side and off. The first one to manage to do that is the winner. So to start the game we take our four animal cards, we shuffle them and pull one at random and this is going to be our starting animal so i'm going to place that at the end of the board here and the other three i'm going to put face down just next to it on your go you're going to choose any one of your playing pieces to move even one that you just moved on your last go and you're going to start moving that across the board now playing pieces can move in straight lines only playing pieces can move forward back left or right but they cannot move diagonally and they can't move past another player you can move your piece as far as you want in a straight line, but it cannot cross over whatever animal has been turned up here. So we've got a blue rhino here, and that means that none of these pieces at the moment can cross over a blue rhino. They can go all the way up to a blue rhino, but they have to stop there, or they can stop anywhere before that. So if I'm the red player, I can't move this one at all because of this rhino. I can't move this one at all because of this rhino. I could move this one but only one space to here but this one I could move to here although if I move it to here as far as I could go then there's a rhino here and a rhino here so that means that that's not going to be able to move any further unless I reverse on the next go or unless that rhino changes to something else but it's unlikely to for quite a while because there are no pieces near the end here so the best move potentially for red at this point is to move this one only one space, then wait for the other players to make their moves, move one space again to there, have the other players make their move, and then finally you're able to move all the way over to here to this rhino. So you're not always going to be making really good moves, but it's about planning out how you're going to move so that you can eventually move the furthest. It's a bit of a waiting game and playing the long game. As soon as a player gets one of their playing pieces off of the board then that piece is home safe. At that point they pick up the three overturned cards, they look at them and they decide which one of these they want to be the next blocker animal. So if they go for the green lizard that one then becomes the blocker, this rhino goes back into here and these are not used. Now it does mean that whatever animal has been the blocker cannot be the blocker again. So you can never have the same animal blocking twice. At this point the game continues with nobody being able to move past the lizard this time and each time that a player gets one of their playing pieces off of the board they look at the cards, choose a new animal and the animal changes each time. The first player to get all of their playing pieces off of the board is the winner. At first glance, Bakari seems to be a rather straightforward, simple game where you just move your playing pieces as far as you can across the board until they meet that animal that's the current blocker. And then on each of your subsequent turns, you just keep moving, you take a piece off, it changes animals, and you keep repeating that in a kind of mechanical fashion. Now, if you were actually choosing the animals that were the blockers at random, then that would be the case, and it wouldn't be a particularly great game. But the fact that you actually choose 
which animal is going to be the blocker next time once you've moved one of your pieces off of the board means that there's a lot more strategy involved. And the fact that you're not allowed to choose the same animal twice in a row means that you really have to think about this. Rather than just trying to move your pieces as fast as you can across the board and off of it, it pays dividends to move your pieces as close to the edge of the board, but not off until you're ready to. You can have one or multiple pieces lying in wait, just ready to zip off the board with no blockers in front of them, but keep them there until the opportune moment. Because as soon as you get a piece off, you're gonna have to change what the blocker animal is, and that might screw up some of the other pieces which were being able to get across the board, but now will suddenly not be able to. So you've got to think about what you choose next to give yourself the optimal moves so you can continue to get your pieces over, but also making sure that you're choosing a piece to make sure that your opponents are not gonna get any of their pieces very far or off the board. And sometimes you're gonna make sure that you choose the animal that's gonna be the blocker, knowing that your opponent is not going to then be able to choose that one again on the next go if they get one of their pieces off. There's definitely far more to consider than it first appears with this game. And for that reason, I really, really enjoy this one. It is quite a quick game. It says it's half an hour, but if you're playing two players, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And of course, it's expandable. You can play up to four players, but just with less playing pieces each. Now, I've not played the later release, the 2016 version Totem, but that is slightly different in that whereas in Bakari, everybody starts on the same side and has to get off the opposite side, in Totem, you've got to all start on different sides of the board, so you're moving across each other. I think that would definitely add a slightly different element to the gameplay because in both versions, you're able to use your pieces to block your opponent from moving. Now, in this game, you can definitely use that to your advantage, being able to stop them moving along paths, and that is a really good tactic. I think it would have a definitely slight different flavor when you're all moving in slightly different directions, but I would be quite interested to have a go at playing that. But it's not one that I've come across yet to be able to do that. I really like the theming on this one, the African kind of tribal totem pieces here, I really like, and I am a fan of sculpted plastic pieces, so to me, I prefer this look to the wooden meeples of totem. But it's just a nice little abstract strategy game where you do have to think about it, but it's quite easy to play. There's not lots of different moving parts that you're having to consider. It's quite easy to focus in on it and concentrate. If you can find this, I would definitely recommend it. I really do like this one. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen here today. If you have, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you next time on Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.